After a later than expected start on Saturday morning, we left Vancouver and headed up the Sea to Sky Highway to the boat launch at Porto Cove. From here, we loaded up the boards and set off for what promised to be a trip to remember. The plan for this trip was simple. We'll be spending the next three days paddleboard touring our way through the spectacular Howe Sound in British Columbia. Howe Sound is the southernmost fjord in North America and is surrounded by volcanic peaks rising up out of the Pacific Ocean. Once we were on the water, we quickly faced our first challenge of the trip. A four kilometer open ocean crossing to the east side of Anvil Island. Anvil is the third largest and most northerly of the major islands in Howe Sound. There's always something special about the feeling of returning to the backcountry. The chance to enter what feels like a parallel world untouched by human activity. Don't get me wrong, there's still a healthy amount of apprehension and nervousness ahead of any expedition. It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned explorer or a first time adventurer. The backcountry should always be treated with respect. Weather conditions can change quickly and medical support is rarely available. As we reached the shores of Anvil, we pulled over on a nearby beach to stretch our legs and grab a snack. We were then back on the boards again to continue our paddle south along the coastline for another 8 kilometers. While rounding the southeastern tip of the island, we paused briefly to check the channel was clear. Luckily for us, we only had one open water crossing to complete before making camp for the evening on Gambier Island. With the day's paddle behind us, we turned our focus to setting up camp and collecting driftwood for a fire. After a long day of exploring, energy levels were running low. For situations like this, we often decide to pack dehydrated meals. They're very lightweight and quicker to prepare than cooking over an open fire. With dinner over and light fading fast, we lit a small fire below the high tide line and enjoyed the sunset. With another big day planned for tomorrow, we called it a night and turned in. After 
after a 6am wake-up call from the seagulls, we weren't in any rush to pack up. Instead, we opted to brew up a fresh pot of coffee and watch the sunrise over the sound. With coffee and breakfast finished, it was time to leave. Today was going to be another big day of paddling with over 10 kilometers and an open water crossing to navigate. Thankfully for us, the weather forecast was in our favor with sunshine and light four to five knot winds all morning. We'd heard from locals that the afternoon winds on the sound were a different story though. So we put our heads down and got on with the job. As we cruised past the endless beds of mussels on the north side of Gambia Island, it was hard to escape the sheer beauty and abundance of marine wildlife that call the sound home. With roughly a third of today's route complete, we pulled over once again to check our map coordinates and compass bearings. With everything looking good, we hit the water and prepared to take on our next channel crossing. While not as much of a concern in today's conditions, open water crossings on a paddleboard present their own unique set of challenges. Tides, currents, and freezing glacial fed water temperatures are just a few to name. When we reached the western walls of Howe Sound, we switched tack to focus on a more pressing problem. Our 10 litre reserve of fresh drinking water was quickly running dry and we needed to find a new source before we could make camp. By a stroke of luck, we managed to locate a small stream just up ahead on the map. Access wasn't ideal, but we didn't have the luxury of choice, so I hatched a plan to scale the rocks and find the source. With enough drinking water to last the rest of the trip, we set off again in search of our final night's camp.
Similar to our recent trip to Strathcona, we were once again pleasantly surprised to find well-built tent pads nestled in the trees. If you haven't seen that episode, you can find the link in the description below. After experiencing some of the best scenery Hao San had to offer, we were ready to kick back and enjoy our final night by the fire. Little did we know, tonight would be a night we'd remember forever. While relaxing with a buck, we heard an unmistakable sound way off in the distance. To our astonishment, it was a pod of wild orcas swimming up the channel in our direction. We raced to get the cameras rolling before sitting back to admire these incredible creatures. So tonight we've got spicy sausage bolognese and Kung Pao beef. There you go. We packed up again for the last time and began our journey back to Porto Cove. It's hard to believe that such a wild place lies just a few hours from downtown Vancouver. We can't thank you enough for watching and I really hope you consider subscribing. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next one.